。おおとわい。エッグを割れ。エッグを割るんだ。エッグ。ワンダレックプライオリティ is a strange case to crack。An anime original that had such a strong start that it was hailed as anime of the year after just few episodes, and watching it now, it's easy to see why. The colorful and detailed animation, coupled with excellent action set pieces and very relatable messages about overcoming survivor's guilt and the loss of a loved one, with guiding other lost souls to overcome their trauma and move onward to the next life. It is also a small miracle that it even had these great parts, since the production was an absolute mess, where episodes were finished hours before they were supposed to air. The added sci-fi elements, halfway through, while interesting on paper, were trifle and bloated when brought to canvas. You would think a story with a sociopath, artificial intelligence, would age like fine wine with generative AI stealing work made by humans, but I can't even give that to the show. I did like some later elements, like the parallel universes concept, but even I would call them half-baked. Wonder Egg priority is not unique when it comes to these aforementioned issues, and you could probably name several works with production issues just like it. So why you should still consider watching Wonder Egg Priority? Because you're in a lucky spot, and knowing that the ending is terrible might actually, in a weird way, save you from getting too attached. If you are one of those people that were watching week to week and waited months for a conclusion, then I sympathize. But I can't muster the same amount of understandable vitriol that you have for the show. Wonder Egg Priority is about a group of four girls that have lost someone dear to them, and all of them, at some level, blame themselves for it. Wonder Egg Priority deals with heavy topics such as suicide, bullying, gender identity, parasocial relationships, sexual assaults, and it manages to do it with this very sincere tone while our girls mass and pierce through these monsters. I, Rika, Momoe, and Neiru have a great chemistry. And their relationships are both cute teenage girl banter and a group therapy sessions. You could pluck out segments from any moment from the anime, and I'm including the dreaded episode 13 in this, and have it filled with strong banter or personal heartfelt story told by any of our characters. If I'd sum up my feelings for the show, almost nothing feels real about it in a good way. I kept wondering if I'm supposed to take what I see on screen at face value, or question if I'm in a fantasy built by I's dramatic mind as she tries to cope with her friend's suicide. It reminded me of a movie that I saw as a teen, where coma patients in this one hospital were in a shared dream reality. I can't remember the name of that movie, but I think it speaks some volume that I was hoping for. It was all a dream ending compared to what we got. I'm certain that I'm not the only one who would have wanted this story to be just these therapy sessions between our main cast, but alas, we don't have that version. What we have feels like an attempt to start something greater, and that would be admirable in its own way, if not for the real damage the creative process had on its creators. The producer Sota Umehara was allegedly hospitalized twice during the production. Anime industry exploitation of its workers did not begin with one direct priority, and it certainly did not end with it. While Sota Umehara would continue working as a producer for Cloverworks, the director Shin Wakabayashi and the scriptwriter Shinji Nojima have no credits after one direct priority. Shinji Nojima seems to have moved back to writing TV dramas, and Shin Wakabayashi seems to be having it rough. But Sin has a YouTube channel where he has live streamed few times talking about One Direct Priority, so send him some love. Where the cracks really begin to show are the small moments that give you pause and question why. What's the point of this? And if they changed writers for that one scene, and especially when we are hit with a recap episode. I don't really like recap episodes, and find them rather unnecessary even in a 24 episode season. But I can understand why they had to have one here. The studio literally ran out of time and needed every single second they could muster to bring this show over the finishing line. Less excusable is that during episode 13, 
20 minutes out of 40 are spent on a recap and tells us how even with months of time the studio could not properly finish the story. While I did enjoy some contentious episodes like the episode 11, I can't find myself liking the episode 13 my priority at all. With double the runtime it still rust, gives out baffling answers to mysteries that did not need answers, it ruins certain characters, and the entire episode feels like a sequel bait for a follow-up we will most likely never get. So did this ending ruin my journey through Wonder Egg priority? In my video about jellyfish can swim in the night, I made a declaration that I don't mind a bad ending if the journey there is filled with greatness, and Wonder Egg priority really, really challenges my belief. In comparison to the somewhat rust ending of Jellyfist Can Swim in the Night, that feels like a tight, well-written finale that ties up all the loose ends neatly. But there is something that I felt while watching Wonder Egg, or to be precise, I found something lacking. I did not feel any strong attachments to any of the characters, and it took a while to figure out why. It is also why it's quite hard to find words or even write this video. In a way, by knowing that the ending stinks, I already steeled myself for the worst, and inadvertently, I might have not let myself get too attached to these characters. If you are watching this video without knowing anything about Wonder Egg Priority, then I might have stolen that feeling from you as well. I should be feeling more about I and her character, since I love other characters just like her. I may have robbed myself and set up myself for failure before I even began watching Wonder Egg Priority. I wish I could write a passionate rant how this show failed to meet its expectations, but I just can't. I just feel indifferent, which might be even worse or a blessing, depending how you see it. The show ends with a sequel bait and I would not say no to more Wonder Egg Priority. Heck, I might even get hype for more, but I'm not clamoring for more. Maybe one beautiful day we get more, but today is not the day. Still, after all that, if you have not seen Wonder Egg Priority, then you should. I purposefully spoke very broadly, so you can go and watch it for yourself. The first half of the show is still amazing, and depending how well you relate to any of the four main girls, you might get way more out of it. Maybe knowing that the ending drops the egg makes you appreciate the journey more. Perhaps the glorious animation is something that personally speaks to you. Maybe there is one side character that really speaks to you. Only you can know that. And if you heed my warning that the ending does not deliver, that might enhance your experience. Maybe you're insane and actually like the ending. Wonder Egg Priority is probably someone's all-time favorite anime, and maybe that someone could be you. I understand that my reasoning is at best a tepid recommendation, but Wonder Egg Priority is interesting enough that it should not be forgotten. Thank you for watching, and next up is a seasonal video. This summer season has few promising titles, and one of them happens to be a Cloverworks production. See you next time, and have an excellent night.